In this video, I want to talk about the precise definition of a limit. So, so many things later on in calculus are built from limits, and we essentially have to understand how this definition works if we're going to understand a lot of the other things that get worked into calculus. In this definition, it says that we say that the limit as x approaches a is some number l if the following condition is met. If for every epsilon greater than zero there exists a delta greater than zero, such that for all x we have the following. Whenever the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, it forces the absolute value of f of x minus l to be less than epsilon. So as you can see, just reading the definition is sometimes not as helpful as you would like. In fact, you're probably still scratching your head going, what exactly is this definition trying to say? To really figure it out, I'm going to instead show you a different situation, and then we'll tie it back into this definition. So to really understand what this thing is trying to say, let's imagine a game where you're trying to throw a ball and hit a target. And let's also suppose that your throwing is very consistent. So the more that you play this game, you've realized that you can actually start predicting at where the ball will end up. Let's go ahead and mark out a few things. So let's say wherever you stand, we'll call that x. And wherever we can get the ball to land, let's call that our f of x. Now, as you play this game more and more, uh, you learn a lot about your throwing and you determine that there's actually some sort of sweet spot that when you stand there, you can pretty much hit the target every time. Let's go ahead and mark out this sweet spot. Let's go ahead and mark out the bullseye of the target as L. Okay? So in this situation, uh, now you can make lots of predictions on where that ball will end up. And your friend is watching you play this game over and over, and they decide to test how good you are at the game. They basically say, hey, can you get that ball within, say, five feet of the target? Now, since you've been playing this game long enough, you actually know how close you need to stand from the sweet spot in order to make sure the ball actually lands within five feet. So if we had to mark those guys out, that would look like this. So our distance from our function and the bullseye L, we will call that an epsilon. And the distance that you end up standing from the sweet spot, well, we'll call that our delta. All right, so now that we have some more terms in here, again, think of that situation. Your friend comes along and they give you some sort of epsilon, basically how far they want you to get the ball within that bullseye. Now, once they give you an epsilon, you know a lot about that sweet spot, so you basically set your distance to be some sort of delta away from the sweet spot. That way you can guarantee the ball will land where it should be. Now, this situation that we've basically cooked up is essentially what the limit is trying to do. It's trying to make sure that you can basically get arbitrarily close to the limit. And to force your function to be arbitrarily close, we make sure that we choose our x values appropriately. To see why this really matches up with the definition, let's go ahead and add a few more terms in here and make some connections. So one thing that we can connect is this distance between our function and the limit. Since absolute values can be thought of as a distance, that's what this part of the definition is trying to say. If you're looking at your distance between the function and L, we want to make sure that it's within some sort of epsilon threshold. And that if we want our function to satisfy this, then it really matters how we choose our x's. So again, absolute value is a distance. We'll make sure that we choose our x values so that they are a distance of delta away from a. So 
So if we make sure we choose our x values sufficiently close to a, it forces our function to be sufficiently close to L, then I know this has a limit. So even though this is kind of a, a silly situation, it essentially gives us a lot of information about the limit. We want to get arbitrarily close to L, and all we have to do is choose things arbitrarily close to A. Let's look at one more situation, and this will be a little bit more mathematical. Okay. So here I have a function, and I want to talk about the limit of that function. Before I can say the limit exists, I basically have to make sure that I can get as close to the limit as I want. So what I might do is I might determine some sort of threshold around my limit, and of course this is my distance, epsilon. Now if I really want to make sure that I end up within this threshold, I have to be really careful how I choose my values around A. From this, I can see that I basically need to choose A values, or X values, within this interval to make sure that I'm within epsilon of L. So just to make things nice and symmetric, I'll create a smaller interval and call this distance my delta. So if I want to be within epsilon of my limit L, then I need to choose things within delta of my value A. And if I can do that for any x inside that threshold, then I know the limit exists. So now let's pick apart that definition. So you can see that all this thing is basically trying to say is that we want to get arbitrarily close to our function. So the distance between our function and L, we want to make sure that that is arbitrarily close. So that if I did have some sort of threshold, epsilon, I could go back and I know how close I need to choose my x values from A. And if I can get this situation to happen for any threshold, then I know that the limit exists. So hopefully that uh, situation has helped, uh, as well as the rest of my graphs. Remember that a lot of things are built from the limit, so you definitely want to understand this definition. Watch my later videos on how we can use the precise definition of a limit and actually compute what the limit of a function is.